Well, uh, let me preface the, what the presentation is all about, and hopefully, you know, if, uh, hopefully we'll get onto the track that you're looking at. But uh, one of the things that Case Western Reserve is primarily looking at is making better use of the information that it has and using data to drive its decision-making policies and practices. And hopefully that will get us to our strategic goals and objectives. Through that end, uh, we have been working with business objects to maximize the use of the software to the rest of the campus community to actually help us achieve those goals and objectives. So what we're hoping today is to talk about business objects, how we're using it today, and just how you can potentially take that to your own area or organization and maximize or what you need to do in terms of making decisions based on data and not just anecdotes or feelings or any other superficial information. You really want to get to the data so that you're making your strategic goals and objectives for the long term based on what you're seeing today. Uh, so with that said, um, we would like to just go ahead and start with some of the presentation in terms of demonstrating what we have to, in order to allow you to pull data back. Now what we're here going to do is look at two reports. We're still at two, right? Three, three reports. We'll look at three reports. And uh, again, this is just a general idea of what you can do. You're only limited uh, in regards to this specific information you're trying to get to. So if you have large amounts of data, you can work at any level, both the executive level all the way down to the basic end user level, just depending on what you want to do. You can drill down into the information so executives who are looking at summary level information and find something interesting can then drill down deeper, or you, the end user can start right at the details and manage what they need to do from that perspective. In this particular report, uh, we want to start with the hold report. and. Uh, Various institutions or organizations that we have on campus work with students and the students have holes on their accounts and needing to understand, you know, where are our holes, how can we be proactive in contacting the students before they're trying to register to help them actually deal with this in advance. And this, again, this is just simple data that we're using in terms of our holes. So if we look at the information right now, we can see at my level, I can see that there's quite a bit of holes out there in certain areas. Uh, the dental school, not so much, so I don't need to reach out to the dental school register just yet. They, they're pretty much, their students are on top of things. But then if I look closer at perhaps exit interviews, uh, there are some management records that are on hold, and then of course past due balances. Uh, so I would need to be working very closely with our bursar's office to see if how we can communicate to get the collections of these things in advance. Because as we speak today, students are registering for the summer and fall. So 4,000 students right now are not able to register because of this issue. What could I be doing better or what could I be working with the bursar's office to do to help contact some of these students and possibly mitigate some of these situations? Again, this is specific data to the registrar's office and how I can make decisions early to deal with the students now. It could be financial crisis. One of the strategic goals of CASE is retention. It's a very large item on the president's radar. We want to attract students into case, but we also want to retain them through graduation. That could be a huge barrier for a student staying. What can we do? Again, uh, let's drill down into the management hold records for a second. Now this is mocked up data, so this is not real information, let me preface that right now. <laughs> uh, but it's just for an example for our demonstration purposes. Uh, and we can see that most of these holes were put on for spring 08, which we're coming to the end of the term. However, again, when I'm evaluating the information, since we are into summer and spring, or excuse me, summer and fall registration, I need to be working with the registrar at uh, Man Weatherhead School of Management right now, so we can figure out what's going on. Can we see the pie chart there? Is there should be a pie chart to the right? It's on the, it's on the other report. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. 
Now, this is just a dispersion of the individuals, and it's not a very clear representation of what you can. But again, when I mentioned earlier about being able to drill down into the deeper information, just based on your need, whatever you need to do, you can drill down deeper and deeper. And if this was real data, I could actually drill down to the student record information and start doing some comparison. Again, it's based on the body of data that you have pulled together. If I was looking at this report, perhaps I would have re requested that my starting data set, my starting data set would include the hold, but it also includes demographic information. It could also include perhaps primary advisor so that I can maybe see if there's a particular area or college that I need to really focus on in order to make the appropriate decision. Again, you're only limited to what you believe your data can get you. So you have to start thinking outside the box. Every day you work with same data, same data, but then what kind of decisions can I make with that data? Where can I go with that data? Where, what are the long-term goals? How can I get information to the higher levels in the organization that will support that? All of that's possible by, again, just setting up the appropriate reports and then pulling it down. The more you have together to pull together, the more able you the, excuse me, the more you are able to go down deeper into the information. Question. So if I'm looking at this, can I as an end user go in and, and drill uh, for the things that you're describing, you know, look to see what are the advisors and how many students for each advisor? Okay, very good question. The question was, as an end user, would he be able to go in and drill down into the information? Of course, there's business practices around who would have access to what information, and you would set up the appropriate securities to make sure that inappropriate people would not be looking at inappropriate data, but assuming you had all the rights that you were to, to be able to do the information, then yes, you can just go down and go down into the deeper levels. Are there any other questions before we take a look at another report? Okay, great. Uh, why don't we take a look at the second report and you guys just tell me which one is the better report to look at and we'll just go from there. So exit interviews, again, another factor uh, for our office. Students are not allowed to receive their transcripts if they have a hold on their account. These students, most of these students could have graduated and are trying to seek a job, trying to uh, gain access to board examinations, everything that would require them needing their transcript. But as long as that hold is on their account, they're not gonna be able to do it. So it would be beneficial for us to reach out to the students and contact them in advance so that they don't find out when they need a transcript two weeks from now and we're saying, I'm sorry, you have to deal with this issue first. They're looking at deadlines and they're not looking to come back on campus to sign a piece of paper saying that they've received an exit interview for their student loans. Again, this is a, how we're looking at being able to manage students' experience here at Case. Not just the experience of getting the case, not just the experience of staying at Case, but the experience of what happens after Case, alumni donations. All of those are critical things to keep the university going. So if they're experiencing having a good experience here at the Case University before, during, and after, they're likely to speak very well of Case, be willing to donate back to help Case continue its mission, and send their children here, which would be also a good thing. So again, keeping the long-term vision, and I'm at the registers level. I'm sure the president and vice provost have other things that can help, but this is what we can do to help them manage their strategic goals and objectives as well. So this is just some basic demographic data. Um, let's. If I was just to take that a little bit farther is, I could actually see, is there particular counties or communities where we're seeing uh, issues across our, our student population? 
then I could help admissions or our retention office to work with those areas. Maybe there's a bigger problem than just the students being here. Maybe there's a community issue that we could be looking at to see if we could partner with the community to find ways to help the student population deal with whatever the challenges we are seeing. So let me open it up. Talk to me more about your data. I mean, I can continue going on the re uh, reports, but if you feel comfortable, Share with us some of the things that you're trying to get at, and perhaps, and I'm sorry, colleagues, I'm going to put you on the spot, but uh, perhaps we can talk about ways you can actually maximize getting that data out of something like business objects. Anyone? Jamie. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the domain and the information that's in the data warehouse right now? Okay, the domain, that is definitely getting out of my expertise. <laughs> Right now, what we're starting with is, what you see now is the, the newer data warehouse. We have the existing environment, but in order to get campus solutions in, which is the new student information system, we had to go to the latest version of the data warehouse. As part of that, we're moving from Business Objects 6.5 to what you see here is Business Objects XI. So right now, the initial information we have in the data warehouse is the student records data, because that's what went live already. And with XI, you see that we're doing a little more of the drill down functionality, as well as uh, on the left side here, you'll see the available objects screen, which here you can use this to basically drag and drop. So what we're planning on doing is creating a few master reports. And now through master reports, we'll have 15 to 20 different objects that each individual user can come into this and basically add whatever three, four, five, up to those 15 fields that they want to see, sort on those fields, group by those fields. And basically, you know, with that single master report, there's millions of combinations of various reports that everyone can do. So you have everything in, do you have everything in the PeopleSoft Campus Solutions current implementation? So. Within the Campus Solutions warehouse right now, it's, we don't have the financial, student financials yet, but we do have the majority of what would be considered student records and class enrollment okay. right now. So that's what we're building on uh, probably about two months away from going live with some of the reports at this time. Okay. Yes, question. Can you use the word PeopleSoft? Are you guys using PeopleSoft? Yes, we are. Uh, we have PeopleSoft Financials, we have PeopleSoft HCM, and we're just now implement, implementing Campus Solutions. So basically right now, the data warehouse basically sits between those three. What's the cost efficiency of using PeopleSoft versus everyone? <laughs> I'll turn to Penny for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's really way too long of a question to answer. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yes, thanks, Amid. <laughs> okay. um, but typically, uh, you know, to answer it in the general sense, uh, uh, college or university uh, does some kind of feasibility study and, and uh, works with the various vendors and, and picks the, the solution that best uh, fits their needs. And um, not having been here at the time, but uh, having been at Tri-C, um, I... Uh, I know that's what Tri-C did, and I'm sure that's what uh, Case did, so. No more questions? Okay, good. Um, let me talk about a little bit about um, the PeopleSoft situation and business objects in relation to that. I mean, PeopleSoft is a integrated resource planning software, one-shot solution, meaning all the information is integrated somehow, some way. So uh, the admissions information is integrated into the uh, regist registration and records information, which is integrated into the people, soft financials information, which is integrated to the human resources capital. So now you're having all your information available in one spot, for the most part, just imagine the opportunity you have to really pull out slices and different angles of your data to actually look at your organization as a whole, because it now sits in one main system, and just pull it out to this business object system, which is a data warehouse, and now you can start slicing and dicing and looking at data from all kinds of perspectives and go as deep as you need to or stay as high as you need to based on your needs and requirements. That same concept applies to what you may be looking to do. If you can manage to find a way to put all of your information into a single area, then it's just a matter of your imagination. It really is. How do you need to look at the information? 
that is pretty much our presentation in the nutshell. But questions, Jamie? Yes, you, I'm sorry. When you have your point specific data, can you export from this into Excel? Like, can yes. You yes. Because this does get that ability too. You can save it as a PDF. You can save it as an Excel file. And if, can you go the opposite way if you have information in Excel or Access? Can you export it too? That you can that's where Kyle's job basically is. And, uh, ETL is extract, transform, and load. That's basically the data movement. And there's an ETL is basically an enterprise level tool as well that moves data between systems. So there's quite a bit that goes into bringing data into the data warehouse. But one of the nice things, and one of the things that we're looking to do in the nursing school is we have databases ourselves. We have SQL databases, we have access databases. Eventually, as business app just gets rolled out, we would like to take our databases and use business objects as a reporting tool for our data. So that will give us not only access to the data warehouse data, but also our faculty data, our, our student data that pertains just to nursing or to other databases that our school is interested in. And you can do it that way. Yeah, we're still very much at the beginning phase, but there's basically two things that you're seeing here. You're seeing the data warehouse itself, which is just the conglomeration of all the data from various systems. We're starting with PeopleSoft systems, but eventually we will add other systems if they're appropriate to bring into the data warehouse. And then business objects is the other piece of that, which is an enterprise reporting tool. So right now we're only pointing at the data warehouse to bring data out of the data warehouse, but business objects has the ability to point to basically any system. And you can build reports. Again, it's a lot of development involved in doing that, but it is possible to point business objects at anything. That way, you have a centralized reporting environment. So you could eventually point to the like library catalog. Yes, we can point to basically any access database, SQL database, DB2, Oracle, any database that's out there, any data that's out there. Yes, Jamie. Uh, to continue on this theme. Um, what do you see as the evolution of the system and then the tool over the coming years, specifically related to the Web 2.0 technologies that they discussed in the general uh, sessions? I can give you the timeline uh, as far as relating to the Web 2.0. I'm not sure if I can answer that yet. But basically, uh, Campus Solutions, like I said, we're going live probably around June with the Campus Solutions warehouse. Uh, each source system takes probably about a year's worth of development to bring into the data warehouse. So in 2009, we're looking at financials. In 2010, we're looking at HCM. At that point, then, we'll have the ability to start looking at other systems and building on top. Do you, do you see a place for kind of a collaborative vision um, in, in, in this technology, the system? Where, uh, you know, if so, what's the place of that? There is definitely the uh, collaborative possibilities. Because like I said, business object is a reporting tool that can point to anything. So if you have someone who has the desire to learn it, who has the technical expertise to do those sorts of things, we would be open to eventually, once we're comfortable using it, to rolling it out and supporting some of those areas. Okay. And I mean, Business Objects also has a single sign-on functionality that you can incorporate with that. So I mean, we could just hook that directly into you know, the case of web portal and stuff like that. So I mean, there's, there's a little bit of web 2.0 stuff that could be implemented. But um, I mean, as of right now, that's definitely not available. But we're still definitely in the process of building up our architecture first before we really roll it out and start the collaborative process. I think, too, Jamie, in terms of the uh, wider world, that, that uh, institutions are just barely beginning to delve into using data warehouses and business intelligence, if you will, with the 2.0 tools sets. And I've seen just a few articles, but not, not a whole lot. Thanks. Any other questions? Well, I know this is a short presentation. Um, again, it's about the reporting tool and the capabilities. Uh, can I ask if uh, we've at least addressed some of the reasons why you came to the presentation? Uh, OK, I did not. So also, if you could, please take a moment or two to fill out the survey. Uh, and you can leave them in the back, or you can leave them up front. We do appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to at least come by and see what we had to offer. Thank you. Have a great day.